All right, it is Python on hardware time. There blinka, is a blinka, lot going blinka. on. So um, okay. for 2020, we asked the community, what do you want to see in CircuitPython 2020? You it can tell be, us. It could be projects, it could be code. Um, but like I was saying on the, the show and tell, because um, Scott was there and he heads up our CircuitPython development. CircuitPython is code plus community. So um, take a look at the blog posts on our site where it's also in the newsletter. Because in addition to, um, here's what I'd like to see with you know core uh, technical features. Um, people are telling their personal stories about what it's like to be in a very kind, functional, inclusive, diverse community that are sharing projects, sharing code, and trying to make something that makes programming easier and more fun. Yay. And this is from beginner all the way to experts. Um, one of the things that I'll show in a couple minutes here is uh, the ease in which you can prototype and do things and iterate is what CircuitPython is really good at. And it's really good being able to have that idea and being able to, to make it. But um, boy, it would be lonely if it was just you doing it. So part of what we've done is uh, build community around every part of CircuitPython. So um, just to give you an idea of, of some of the things that came in so far. Okay. Because, um, you know, folks have lots of different ways. So uh, one, you can, just to how to get it to us, you can do a video on YouTube, post on CircuitPython forum, blog post on your site, series of tweets, um, you can put a, a gist up on GitHub. You can email us, circuitpython2020 at adafruit.com. Um, things that we're looking for, projects like to build, things you can make easier, additional community programs, and the list goes on and on and on. But um, the folks that, that have uh, added stuff, some of it's on our team. Uh, some of it's things like, I want to see HomeKit. Some of it's, uh, here's uh, specific things I want to see with music. Here's specific things I want to see with Blinka, which is our, which is for Linux. Yeah. So that's all available. Um, you can... Uh, just make sure you email us uh, or, you know, put it in Discord or tag yep. tag us. Um, we find comments and we add those as well. Like, here's all the things we saw on Twitter. Here's all the things we saw on Instagram. And and we'll tell you, yeah, whatever you think would be cool. We, we, we do listen to what people are saying. People want something, tell us, and it, it gets it into the blender and we mix it up. And yeah. we may not get to it this year, but... But you can it, see past years. We have. You have, yeah. but we have, we've been, we had a pretty good run. And um, it's also interesting to hear from people what they liked about the last year as well. You know, yeah. if there's stuff that you've seen that you're like, wow, I'm really glad this got used or got made, that'll be also helpful. Just, yeah. you know, we, we make code to work with other people. We want to hear from, it's not just what I want to build, it's what everybody wants yeah. to build. And I think at this point, we're like, you know, year two, three into CircuitPython, you can tell this is working out. There is a huge ecosystem of boards already. Uh, we're almost up to 100 boards over uh, half of them. Most of them are non-Adafruit boards. Correct. So that's that's how we know we did a good job. When we're when more people are deciding to put their um, thoughts and passion and goals and hope and and even business ideas into this. So speaking of, um, there is a new board. We have the uh, Circuit Python. Uh, did, did people say MXRT? It's 10X the M M I M X R T yeah. ten sixty. Okay, this is a super powerful NXP chip. Ultra power, like a gigahertz. That's what it is, yeah. Super powerful. And uh, Feather Format, USB-C, CircuitPython running, and Arturo has been uh, a member of the community, has a board called Serpente, sells it on Tindy, and it runs CircuitPython. And this is the initial... It's like a mezzanine thing going on there, yeah. too, just kind of cool. Initial pull request came in. It's now on circuitpython.org slash downloads. And uh, Lady Ada, just for the folks that um, aren't super technical, or even if you are, like it's hard to keep track of all these chips. Why is this NXP chip in particular uh, good? Well, for, for this or for anything, really? Yeah, there's no bad chips. All chips are good. Yeah, but yeah. this one is interesting because it's a very, very powerful chip. It's running um, the 1010, I think, runs at 500 megahertz. This one might run at 700 or 800, I can't remember. And you can have external memory, external flash. I mean, they're very intense chips that can run Linux. I mean, it's almost the same power as a uh, Raspberry Pi Zero, but they're very inexpensive. Um, the cost has, has come down quite a bit on these chips. And so, for example, the 1010, which was on the other Feather, um, you know, I'd like to sh use that as, as an example because, um, yeah, it's running at 500 megahertz. I think it has like 120K of RAM. Uh, you can put external flash on it. And it's running at, um, it costs like a dollar 25 or something. It's so inexpensive. Um, and for CircuitPython, you know, we have enough RAM now, I think, to do a lot of projects, but, uh, you know, because we have to use like 80% of our cycles on interpretation of the Python script, 
having a very, very fast processor will make people feel like they're, you know, it's working a lot more like modern Python on a desktop. Like we're, we're trying to achieve like modern desktop yeah. Python speeds like on a Python microcontroller. Python is Pythonic. So if you yeah. learn Python on the desktop, theoretically, as these boards come out, it is pretty much the same thing. Yeah. So cool, interesting. Cool. Yeah, the, you, you know, you do have to add, they have a couple of the intricacies that are very interesting. I mean, they're not the, the easiest chips to use, of course, as they get more powerful. They have like memory management units and, and you know, you have to partition your memory in a certain way. Um, but they are also extremely capable. Um, like the chips have high speed USB. This would be one of the first yeah. high speed USB chips um, that's supported for CircuitPython. So it's very exciting because we want to do okay. more with that. So expect more. Uh, watch the news. It was on Hackster. Uh, watch our site. We have some boards coming. Our Turo has some boards coming. Um, it's working out, and uh, hopefully we'll be doing some partnerships uh, with some uh, companies, maybe including an XP, on how to introduce this chip to a world of makers, hackers, artists, engineers, people who want to build for fun and also for industry and also for business. So stay tuned for that. All right. Very exciting. Okay. Um, we've been doing our top of the decade posts on Adafruit, and... The number one product for the last decade, all together when we add up everything, was the Circuit Playground Express. And Yay. one of the reasons is because it runs Circuit Python. It's also right. Also runs Makeout, also runs Arduino, also runs TinyGo, also does other things. But congratulations to all of you out there for picking a winner by a, a purchase. Um, you, you voted with your dollars, and that's what we tallied up, and that was the product of the decade for us. Some new products that are running Circuit Python. We have the Itsy Bitsy. Just Yay! Out. People wanted something small, has yeah. Bluetooth. This is it. It's a blue fruit board, but it's so teeny. It's the Itsy Bitsy NRF52 840. The Circuit Python thermal camera that Cedar Grove is working on. Uh, this is a cool project. A GitHub repo has uh, a video on YouTube. And one graphics. Of the things, one of the things I liked was as um, Cedar Grove was discovering how um, Display IO worked, made these cool graphics to better understand. Um, themselves how it all works so check that out congratulations to deshi poo um, the new pew pew m4 is a circuit python graphical handheld game console and it is now oshawa certified Yay. as open source hardware some happy new year from our friends over in japan who made the circuit python book that's available in japanese language they made this cute graphic and puts it up the um, Chica Lori, I guess she's yeah. the she's the mascot. This is uh, the Circuit Python to uh, MIDI to control voltage module, the Winter Bloom, and this is by um, so, yeah. Thea Codes. Sure get everything right here. And it's fun, easy to program, allowing integration between USB MIDI and module synth gear. This is what uh, JP made and I love I love the PCB on top of the cigar box. It's cool. It has, has a really nice look to it. Um, this is what I was talking about before. Um, needed just to make this uh, light, needed to be motion activated. It's a joy to prototype with CircuitPython um, and well-documented Adafruit boards. Um, we do, CircuitPython is code plus community. Um, if we had to add a tagline, we'd probably say, it's a joy to prototype with CircuitPython. So here's, uh, that's how easy it was to make. So easy. All right, Helen, who was just on the show and tell, um, was it 36C3? Uh, it was cool get together that they do in Europe every single year. Um, this is the Serpente I was talking about before. We're in some Neopixels and it's wearable and it's sellable. Speaking of Serpente, this is the first Serpente shield. So the Serpente is circuit Python board and folks are already building accessories for it. Oh, I like this. It's a cute idea. You just yeah, plug it right in, you get a little rotary encoder, rotary IO and an OLED. Yeah, it's super cute. Good idea. Okay, um, these are some feathers that are um, taking flight, making their way. This is a UWB localization feather by Jed Hopkins. Yeah, these are, these are little modules that let you do uh, localized orientation and distance sensing. Yeah. This is the Orange Crab uh, Revision Point 2 boards. So they're in, they're in orange. And uh, this is yet another cool feather design. So we're trying to uh, keep an eye on all the different feathers. There's hundreds of them. This we is so intense. Look at this. GitHub.com slash Adafruit slash awesome dash feather. That'll give you an idea what's going on. A lot of these run through Python, of course. Um, there was public domain day. And so Michael Weinberg, a friend of ours, made a Raspberry Pi Python powered image display that used the Children's Museum of Art open access API. And so then, of course, uh, Dan over on uh, 
Twitter said, I can make this with PyPortal. So we're already seeing that. And that's one of the cool things. When you could do rapid prototyping, it's almost like skateboarding, where everyone's doing tricks together. It's not a competition. It's just like, hey, look at this cool trick. Hey, look at this cool trick. That is free art every day. Here is another PyPortal project. This gets uh, Code Chompers Twitter follower count and the YouTube stats uh, programmed in CircuitPython and Python. Such a fun little single board computer. All right, go subscribe and follow Code Chomper. Yeah. Get, that, get those numbers up. This is a neat um, project from AdaBox 14, which happened to ship with a Circuit Playground Bluefruit Express that runs CircuitPython. It's one of these cool globes, and you can make this technique inside of uh, the snow globe. Um, it's like acrylic paint and stuff like that. Um, we don't really go to CES. Um, I think maybe we were banned for TVB Gons or something like that uh, one year, or someone that we knew was. Um, but uh, there is, we try to keep track of like what's kind of interesting in the Python community, at least this year. And so this is called Ricci, and it's a uh, Python controlled robot. There's a circuit, there's a um, Raspberry Pi inside of it. I'm trying to get a hold of the company and oh, finding the out. Antenna ears, yeah, like it. it's super cute, and, and it's it's expensive. It's ten thousand dollars, but the idea is you'd be able to program it with with Python amongst other things. Okay. Um, so that's kind of cool. So we'll we'll continue to try to uh, do some more coverage um, from CES. Seven thousand thanks. The newsletter that we do every single week about Python hardware. We reach seven thousand subscribers. Thank you so Yay. much, everybody. Um, Twenty twenty. We'll continue to cover all the greatest news in the world of Python and hardware. Um, lots of ways to send us news and more um, check the blog check the newsletter check our video put it in the comments we'll probably cover it that's python hardware news this week all right okay